What's up guys, we are back with Son of Horror, this is episode 5, been waiting about 2 months for this game, I cannot wait to see the ending. So if you guys haven't seen this game, I have all chapters on my channel, and this is supposedly the last chapter, so let's see where it takes us. Husha died in there, trapped. He probably struggled and screamed. Until he went mad trying to find a way out of that godforsaken place. Like me. Only, in his case, nobody got there in time. I imagine he thought that there was a quicker way to go. <laughs> the same way that Father chose. And maybe I would have done the same in his place. What I saw myself do in that mirror was just too much. Is this what lies ahead? Maybe I already know it, but I'm trying to hide it from myself. Maybe deep down, I know it's a hideous omen of what the future has in store for me. Maybe I know that, like everyone who's come across that cursed box, I too will take my own life. That I would rather surrender to death than face whatever it is that lingers behind that infernal melody. I should burn the thing. Make that melody vanish from the face of the earth. But what about Ariadne? She's alive. What if only the box can stop this? I can't destroy it without knowing for sure. Maybe there's something in Legrand's diary. Oh god, I need to rest and gather my thoughts. I need to sleep. I can only hope the nightmares won't be as horrible as real life. That melody. God, I need to find something. There must be something here. Father, Husher, every single person who attended that cursed concert in the Abbey, the entire Legrand Amsberg family and I, we all heard the song. Argos Legrand's diary, which I found in that place beyond reality was my only hope of unveiling something, anything, that could take me down a different path than the rest. And yet, Legrand's notes seemed like nothing more than erratic and incoherent ramblings of a broken mind, so demented that no one could put them together in any order, much less understand them. But I found something towards the end that made some kind of sense. Although, I wish I hadn't. It's all over. Just a moment ago. I... Like every night, the song was invading my dreams, grating incessantly. I woke up, soaked in sweat, and veiled by the shadows. Natalie was sleeping, but I was not. This time, it had to stop. I was hell-bent on destroying the source of that awful song. I went down to the basement and tore down the same wall I built myself. With each blow, I cursed the moment I decided to bring that melody into my home. I couldn't take it any longer. There she was, behind the wall. My wife, huddled in a corner, holding Elaine in her arms. I froze. If Natalie was there, what kind of diabolical creature was sleeping by my side? Monsters. All of them. My beloved Elaine, Natalie. The monsters had locked them away and wanted to take Ariadne. They wanted to take my baby. 
I grasped the pallet, determined to do whatever it took. I would not allow those fiends to take my daughter, not without a fight. They would rue the day they tried to harm my family. I would kill the monsters and the black figure and find my little girl. I followed them throughout the house. Every room was shrouded in darkness. There was something unnatural in the air. The melody had transformed into a choir of black curling howls. But I finally cornered them in the bedroom, where I finished them off. I drew blood, and it flowed like a well from the grotesque black figures while they screamed and writhed, the vile, deceitful fiends. And then, I went back to the basement, and there was nobody there. Natalie and Elaine had disappeared. No, that isn't true. They had not disappeared. They had never been down there. They were upstairs, in the bedroom, where I had left them. There were no monsters in the house. Except me. Only me. Only me. And the presence. Dr. Berenice Prestigard. Oh, Christ, I can barely stand up. I really need help with this. So that's the lady. That's an older lady with the music box. Okay, so looks like we got a choice of a character here. I think we got a new character in Chapter 5. Oh, they don't show... Um... They don't show um, the faces, or is this not the characters? Let's just pick the top one, see what happens. Now oh, this has got to be the characters, right? Alright, let's try Sophie. No, I think I played Sophie before, let's try Lydia. Daniel will only send one person to the Jeremy Hardwood Mental Hospital. Do you choose it, Lydia? Yes, I do. Lydia, guess what? I need your help. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm very sorry for calling this late, but listen. I found something. It's only a small lead, but it mentions everything and has the Jeremy Hartwood Hospital stamp on it. Yeah, that's the one. I, I, I know it's a bit far, but I, I think someone there, a Dr. Berenice Prestigard, read this diary years ago and looked into this madness way before we ever did. It says 1920. There must be something left of her research. If I'm not mistaken, the hospital was abandoned shortly after World War I. So maybe everything is still there. Her notes, her files, something. No, no, I think... I think I'm running out of time. I feel bloody exhausted. I can no longer tell the difference between reality and my hallucinations. I need you to look for something, anything, and call me. I know it's a lot to ask. But I don't want to end up like the rest. And something tells me I should visit Ariadne one last time. Yeah, take your cell and call me if you find anything. As soon as I find out what Dr. Prestigard was investigating, I'll drive over to the Grant Amersberg mansion. Yeah, good luck to you two. And thanks.
Okay, so this Prestigard was a doctor at this hospital who treated a Ariadne, uh, the older lady. And now Lydia is going to investigate. I think she's a new character. I don't remember her last time. Okay, 1998. Jeremy Hartwood Hospital. An old mental health institution for the rich turned dump. Or something worse. thing about this game is that um, if you die you'll actually die and you'll lose the character and you'll have to start with a new character it's like a third person view again I, yeah, I remember the last ones I won't be able to open that gate, but I don't need to go that way. Alright. I guess let's just head straight to the hospital. I should take a look at that old power generator. <laughs> so there's a power generator. And I'd say it still works. Oh, good job. Good job, Lydia. Broken handle. Handle stripped off from a power generator. Uh-uh. I don't have anything to combine with. Great, she's got Ozma. Okay. Damn it. I think you overdid it. Yes, you did. So I'll probably have to come back. This way. All right, let's try to get let's try to get inside. See if that will um will let us. Oh, I should have listened first. I should have listened first. She's gonna die. Nope. The horror and the song, chapter five. I mean, episode five. Daniel, you didn't overcome your alcohol addiction to let this kill you. I certainly won't let it happen. All right. What is this up here? Mm -mm. This panel controls where the emergency power goes to, but it's not getting any electricity. Well, let's follow the wire. Oh, wow, what is this? I really hope this was a part of an attempt of dismantling this place. I think my skinny bum could fit in there, no problem. Alright, let's see if we get a map. Documents, inventory. I thought there was a map in this game. Yes, of course there is. Okay. So that's a hiding place for me. Okay, cool. So if I need to hide, I will go there. There's a stapler on the other side of the glass, on the desk. Oh. Should I grab it? Sure. <laughs> Shit! Just cut myself. Great. No, I need proper protection to stick my hand in there trying to gain this wood. Both stupid and stubborn. Alright, so I need some kind of gloves, maybe. Empty drawers, nothing. Looks like they never got around to moving. How about this door? 
Alright, let's listen first. Okay, coast is clear. Medical equipment. Good. No, so something right here. Nope, nothing special. this door. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm listening for some, um, any kind of noise really. Because if I open up, a monster will eat me if there's a noise, so that's why I'm checking. You don't want to take that knife? Silly you, Lydia. It looks like the closet is open. Hiding here would be child's play. Okay, so I can hide there too. I still feel like we need to turn some the light on somehow, the first thing, maybe. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Useless, useless. Okay, so maybe we can put this all together? I'm not sure why I'm not seeing my mouse. From the highest to lowest, all the numbers are in this photo. Like some obvious parts here. Just gotta put everything move everything out of the way Ah, 
Oh, there we go. I can turn them. Duh. Stupid, silly me. Okay. Might be something like this. More than it seems. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's try to put it together again. Um. Hmm. Surely this goes. Gotta go in here, right? Oh, yeah. Is this right? It's gotta be it. It's close enough. I think that's it. What about this one? Is this the other half of this dude? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That'll work, maybe. Uh, how about now? This goes in here? No, probably not. Alright. So this it right here? Looks like a the tau edge too, edge piece. Is this it? Maybe maybe. Oh I bet this is it. Yeah, that looks fine, I think. That goes in here. Um, hmm. That's somebody's legs. Goes in here somewhere. Looks like it goes in here. What's this little BDP doing? I bet it's the edge. I bet that's the edge right here. So does this fit here now? Okay, somebody sitting down. Probably here somewhere. Maybe here. Yeah, 
This is it. Now the person is sitting down. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Alright. So, what else we got? Is this correct? this for now. Uh, just a few pieces left. Should I go in here? I think fine now. Got a bit right here. So where does this guy go? Oh, uh, just up here, I guess. That kind of fit in there. Okay, that might go in here. This is here. Not very good, but we got some sort of picture. From highest to lowest, all the numbers are in this are in the photo. All the numbers are in the photo. And the seven. From highest to lowest, all those numbers in this photo. I have no idea. Maybe it's for something later. But we got a picture we got a picture put together, so that's good. Okay. Let's go find something else. Oh, what is this? The dismantling has terminated. Work isn't done, but we're not going to stay here a single minute longer than we have to. Two of the teams have refused to return to the East Wing, and Isaac and his boys tied a thick cable around one of the fridge doors to keep it sealed. They don't want to open it, even though scores of tools and kitchen utensils are back there, along with a couple of high-quality chest freezers in perfect condition. It's not the first problem we've had, but the situation has gone too far, so we must leave. I don't blame them. This place makes my hair stand on end. And I've been inside for less time than any of them. There are still so many things of value in there. Typewriters, radios, luxury furniture, it doesn't matter. As soon as Emil's team returns, we're leaving. I hope they don't tarry our nightfall is going to catch us here. I wonder what the hell is taking so long. I hope I don't have to go in to look for them. I can't rotate it. Not this one. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, nothing special, right? Okay, I took it with me. Good. this door anything oh, I bet that's uh, I think that's a um, where am I oh okay there I am I'm in the dining hall still got a bunch of places to see okay did I look everywhere I mean everywhere in the dining hall I feel like I did I must have. Yeah.
right, so where am I? Okay, so let's go. Let's go to the right. It's like from the other side. How is that possible? Uh oh. Do I need to hide somewhere? Okay, we're all good now? Oh, Frank. I think so. Okay, where am I? Oh, back to the dining hall. I don't want to go back there. And I've been there. No, I haven't. Oh, that's the one that's locked. Okay, let's check this place then. Okay, I think they were good. is empty. That's a typewriter, so I have been here. What the crap? Oh. Okay. So let's go right. The building is in a better shape than you'd expect for a place that's been abandoned for that long. It's still half in ruins, though. I'm sure the room next door is some kind of access control. Makes sense if this was an institution with potentially dangerous impatience. The keypad that opens security room. It's not getting any power. been yet. Okay, so this is outside. Oh, what about this door in the top right? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's the door there's no power. Duh. go. This door, should I go in there already? Okay, looks like we're good to go. Shit. Crap, of course.
coast is clear. Oh, this is definitely a new place, okay. Well. Someone used this cable to make sure the handle wouldn't move. Oh. Yeah, we'll take it. Mm. Uh, okay, so I can hook it up to my... Uh, Okay. Combine. I bet I can hook it up to this guy. Right. Sure. Now I can fix it. Okay. A power generator handle tied to a cable. Mm. Very cool. Uh oh. Jesus. Go away, darkness. All right, so we got a place to. Um, we got a way to fire out the generator, I believe. This? Yeah. This is way too outside. up this generator and now we can go through that one door that was like hey we need a power All right generator Let's see what we can do Use. Do it one more try. Oh, I can't believe it work. Got some lights. That is good. That is very good. Now on to the next. Now on to the next. What is this now? Can we do anything with it? Now the generator is on, let's see what I can do here. Okay, morgue, lift, security. Huh. I guess let's try lift. I don't know. that left at or whatever that was at a bit of its top right maybe wait what is this is this anything mattresses no yeah I think it was this place so now is this will this work? Shit. Yeah, the key lock. 
The keypad that opens security room is not getting any power. Oh, okay, it's because I switched from security to the lift. Which is okay. Well. The gate is locked and completely jammed because of the rust. Huh. Maybe we need to go to the security place first. Maybe we need to break this code somehow. So I think we need to turn this back to security. Or it used to be more, right? Alright, security. And I need to figure out how to crack this code. I'm sure I didn't miss anything. So where was that door again? I already forgot. There it is. All right. Let's see how many digits this is first. I don't know. It doesn't really tell me. I remember from the picture, seven something, seven people, right? Seven people. Um, seven people total. Three were sitting down, and one was in black. Whew. I don't know. I gotta think about this. I gotta really think about this. Alright guys, so I figured this out. Um, okay, so we had that picture where there were seven total people. So first number is seven. Remember it says from top all the way to the bottom? From the highest to the lowest? Alright, so we had seven total, six in white hats, four on top, three of them were sitting three on three chairs. And uh, three of them had mustaches, and one was black. Door is open, yet another obstacle we cleared. Thank goodness. I see 
see some notes there. Let's have a look. Who got some notes? Ah, Dr. Baroness Prestigard. It's a good start. Today's session with Ariadne was by far the most productive to date. Not because of the conversation we had, for her mind continues to adhere to the usual extravagant patterns, but because today she asked to get her things back, which led me to a surprising discovery. Down in the storage room, I was convinced I would not find any of the belongings taken from her when she was admitted, but there was nothing further from the truth. There was a diary and a music box. After handing the box to Ariadne, I quickly browsed through the diary, which apparently belonged to her father. And that's where it gets interesting. After years of researching paranormal phenomena, Argus Legrand's investigation led him to the Abbey of St. Cecilia, where a cursed concert had supposedly taken place. After spending a considerable amount of money, he got his hands on the only remaining sheet music from the concert and convinced an acclaimed musician to play the music one more time. The new cursed concert would take place on a steamer that would sail down the Rhine a few weeks later, and both Legrand and his assistants would be there to contemplate the true effects of the song. After the concert, the tycoon wrote the following in his diary. Those ignorant, illiterate fools. I can only laugh at their curse and their stupidity. The only misfortune that damn song has brought is a hole in my bank account. Alas, at least I take the melody with me. I will have it recorded and play it each day for my family. Ha! Those drunk, lazy bastards. Their misfortune was caused by their own stupidity and bad blood. Wanting to put the blame on a song is yet another sample of their total lack of culture. Argus Legrand never knew that the steamer suffered a strange accident, just hours after he got off, that killed everyone on board. And yet his thoughts on the melody eventually changed. They did indeed change. I can't believe it. Daniel wasn't exaggerating. This is much worse than I ever imagined. All right. Whew. So that took me a while to figure all this out. So I'm going to call this part one, guys. I am tired. All right. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you guys don't miss the next video. This game is awesome. It is freaking hard. This episode so far. See you next video.